Check one, two, check one, two. Hello, everyone, and welcome to our first live streamed product clinic right here on the Korg Facebook. Uh, welcome, welcome. We're doing an hour with the Korg Mini Log XD, and we're all quarantined in our homes, just like all of you. So we figured what better opportunity to show you guys some cool tips and tricks on this great synth while we're all at home and having extra time to play with our synthesizers. So just to start out, this is the Mini Log XD. Some of you are probably already familiar with it. It's a four voice analog synth. It is in the log family. So we have this family of analog synthesizers. It all started in 2016 with the Mini Log, a very affordable four voice all analog synth. Some beautiful sounds coming out of that. Filter, really nice, analog oscillators, VCO. After that, followed up with the monolog, monophonic analog synth. And that was a powerhouse bass synth uh, with some really great presets, even some by Aphex Twin. And then the prolog, which is kind of the, the pro large scale analog synth. And that came in a eight voice and a 16 voice, 49 and 61 keys respectively. And then the Mini Log XD. And this is kind of a Mini Log with a little more under the hood. So a couple of the ways that those synths differ, this has a different voicing for the filter. It has a third oscillator per voice, and this is the digital multi-engine. And, and this is a way that you can load VPM, that's uh, variable phase modulation, digital waveforms into your Mini Log XD. So you still have full analog if you want it, VCO running into filter. With some overdrive too. And then you can bring in a second oscillator. You have that, that two VCO per voice. Detune those. It sounds really gnarly with that analog overdrive. And then you can run that through stereo digital effects, which are another thing that the Minilog XD adds to the Minilog style platform. So let's throw on some stereo reverb. And let's select, here's a nice one, space. This one's a huge reverb. Just wow. So like I said, there's that true VCO analog if you want it, but the Mini Log XT as well as the Pro Log uh, adds this multi-engine oscillator. And what is the multi-engine oscillator? Well, it's incredibly versatile because there are three modes to it. So I'm going to pull up an initialized program so I can use my program value indicator right here to switch to an init program. So I can open up a blank program and that just starts with, right? Uh, I'm seeing some of you all in the comments saying awesome built-in reverb. Believe it or not, that's just one of the many DSP algorithms of reverb that are that are on the XD. That's the space algorithm. It's just huge. There's there's some more that are like kind of more realistic, and there's others that are more nonlinear and, and weird sounding, which are great. But I love I love the reverbs on the XD. But back to the multi engine, there's three modes, and the first is just kind of a standard noise mode, and then has a couple types of noise. That's your white noise. And then you have some different filtering modes. And you can use the high pass filter to filter out the low end. And that's actually key tracked. So say so if you're, for example, designing a hi-hat, I can go into my sequencer and let's just do 16 notes. All right. And if I play, 
So let's give that a little bit of envelope, amp envelope, and turn the sustain down. Get our decay down to only about maybe 20% of the way up. A little bit of release. You can hear that if we turn up the sustain. So that's kind of a, a little percussive sound right there. And then we can change the high pass filter cutoff. Go into motion mode. And we've designed ourselves a little bit of a hi-hat loop there. So moving on in the noise section, you also have a low pass noise, a peaking noise, and that's of course key track as well. And then you have a digital noise, and this is really cool because you can bit crush it with the shape knob. We use that for some sound design if we throw that huge reverb from before on there. Let's go with Ooh, let's go with a riser reverb. This is kind of a shimmer type of reverb. Sounds really cool. Just gnarly. Just absolutely gnarly. That sounds great. Uh, so that's the noise section of the multi-engine. Now if we go in to... I'm going to my init sound again the multi-engine and pick the VPM, we have a bunch of waveforms that range from signs and we can modify those in kind of more of a digital capacity with the shape knob than our, our VCOs where the shape knob is just kind of a wave folder. Turn that back down and go to the multi-engine. And something that uh, I think a lot of people that get the Mini Log XD, they mess with the shape knob, but they don't realize that you can also hold shift and you have a secondary parameter called ratio. So you have kind of an X and a Y. Uh, so you almost have sort of a wavetable-ish with the VPM engine. And there's a couple more a lot of fun so there's saws and there's a square wave in there so if you want to do for example like a three saw wave unison uh, you can get that but there's also some some weirder waveforms in there this one almost sounds like kind of like a dx7 So crunchy. So that's the VPM section of the multi engine. Now we have the uh, user section, which is by default just a morphing wavetable oscillator, but we've actually open sourced this so you can put open source oscillators there. You get a bigger view of the XD there. So you have a morphing wavetable oscillator in there, and I hold shift. And then you can load your own oscillators in there. And we've got a, a ton of users that are creating their own oscillators for the multi-engine user section. And if you look up, there's, um, I believe one of them is Sign Vibes, has some really great ones as well as some effects. Uh, and there's just a whole ecosystem of user-created effects and user-created multi-engine oscillators that are available for free. And some, some cool ones that uh, some folks are even have put up for sale because, you know, uh, they've put a lot of work into those uh, custom effects and oscillators. So that's kind of a rundown of the oscillator section. If we kind of move move forward, I showed you some some really nice filter sweeps with the filter. And this is a gain compensated filter. So even if we have 
a lot of resonance going on. I see in the chat somebody says this translates to the prologue. That is absolutely correct. The voice structure on the Minilog XD is actually very, very similar to the prologue. So if you're following at, uh, along at home and you have a prologue, you'll be able to do a lot of these similar patches as well. Uh, even if you're on a monologue or a Minilog, it does kind of translate. So if you're following along, trapped at home in quarantine, you can uh, do a, a, a little sound design along with us here on the stream. So, like I said, the filter is gain compensated, so even if I have the resonance turned up and the drive turned down, I'll still have a lot of low end. And that's even more apparent if I turn up the drive. And then if I bring in a second oscillator, it's really crunchy. Nice. Then, of course, there's the amp and uh, amp envelope and the envelope generator section over here and the LFO. And then we, we went over a little bit of the effects over here, but this is kind of the general um, signal path of the Minilog XD. It's a subtractive synth, so if you're familiar with kind of maybe the Volga keys or the Minilog or, the, or, or any of the other analog synths in the Korg lineup, you'll, you'll kind of be right at home on the Minilog XD. But it just makes a really great sound design tool because you kind of have a little bit of everything. You have the full analog signal path. You also have the multi-engine. And you can do stuff with sequencing on Minilog XD because it's got a really great sequencer. So let me pull up a sequence that I was just messing around with before we started out on here uh, with the stream. And I'm going to do one more, change one more thing. And then we'll be ready to run it. And I'll, I'll show you guys what I came up with. All right. So you guys ready? So that's kind of this complex chord progression-y uh, jam that you could put a lo-fi hip-hop beat to chill study to behind and make a fun uh, a, a beat, basically. You could bring down the filter cutoff. I see in the chat somebody said uh, a bit of this is inside the NTS-1. That is correct. So the Korg NTS-1, uh, the, the new tech lineup from Korg is a, a DIY kit lineup where you can get uh, kits to build everything from pedals to headphone amps, and they're all kind of pocket-sized, and you can combine that with another synth and use it as an effects box because it has the same effects engine as the XD or you could use it for its multi-engine, and it is just a synth in itself, so it has a whole lot of different Swiss Army Knife-like capabilities, and you could even customize it with a front panel that has the controls that you choose. There's a lot of customizability. It's all DIY, so check out the new NewTek NTS-1. Um, so shouts out to the chat there. So that's a cool chord progression that I came up with. If I turn off motion, it actually sounds like this. I'm going to go to motion mode here, and I'm just going to unlight all of these buttons and press play. So those are just the chords, and let's kind of build this up from scratch to show you all how to get this kind of chord progression out of your XD because this is kind of outside of the box of normal, like 16-step uh, housey beat-making sequencing on XD. This is more um, compositional. So let's go to an initialized program. We're going to start out with a gated saw wave. 
And we're going to want to first, very before we do anything else, very carefully go to Sequence Parameters. And let's make the step resolution a half note. All right, so this will mean that every single step in our sequence is a half note long, whereas by default, it's a 16th note long because there are 16 steps and it's one bar, so you can have a 16th note. But we want a half note length. And then one more parameter while we're in sequence parameters, we want to turn up the default gate time, which is the amount of each step that the notes are going to be held. So by default, it's 75% which means that when we have a note in our sequencer, it's going to play for 75% of the time of that step and then stop. So we want that to be 100%. So let's exit out of here and let's record our chord progression. And this is the time where you can get a little creative. So I'm gonna go with some sevens and nine chords. Now we have 16 steps, got a little weird there with the last chord, but if I play that, I'm gonna turn down the filter cutoff, we'll kind of hear our chord progression. So I like most of that, but I want to change just one of the steps in that. So let's go back into record. And now we can select one of the steps we recorded and see all of the notes over here that we recorded in our chord progression, which is really cool and useful because if we just want to change one, let's go in to step two. Now if we press play, let's hear that. That makes a lot more sense musically. Um, just FYI, I uh, sometimes the camera will will focus, so that's kind of what's what's going on. Um, so now that we have our chord progression uh, recorded, so let's bring down the cutoff and let's bring in some LFO. We want to target the cutoff with the switch over here. Bring up the intensity. So we also want to go into BPM mode, so we're synced to the tempo of our sequence. But that's the same every time. Uh, so what we want to do is change a little bit of that to uh, put some motion in there, make it a little bit interesting. So let's, for every step, uh, let's first choose the rate that we want to go. So let's go slow. Oh, we want to go into motion mode. Let's go slow right here. A little faster. A little slower. And bring up the cutoff a little. And bring up the speed for the second step. Cool. Let's get a triplet in there. Get a slower step here. Nice. This is coming together very nicely. And I'm just going to kind of put in random values for the rest of the sequence, and then we can kind of go back and change those if we don't like them or if we want to modify them a little bit to taste. A little reverb. A 
Just a quick hello to everybody in the chat. I do kind of hear the video game vibes, so thanks for picking up on that. Uh, I am a gamer, uh, that's for sure. And uh, yeah, so this does kind of remind uh, you of those classic video game sounds. And if I uh, actually bring in, let's say, some arpeggiation by going back to the, the motion mode, and what is cool about Mini Log XD is motion sequencing the noise, uh, sorry, the voice mode depth. So if I select this step and turn on arpeggiation for just these steps, we can do some fun stuff that way. And then we want to turn, turn off the intensity. Here. And then let's make those arpeggiation steps square waves. This should be fun. This will sound really kind of video game soundtrack like. You can just imagine the drum feet, the drum beat from like a lo-fi hip hop beat to chill study to underneath that chord progression there. So that's kind of like creating a cool um, kind of sort of jazzy, sort of lo-fi chord progression on Mini Log XD. I just want to welcome everybody who has joined us so far on the stream. Thank you for joining us on our first live stream uh, and. I just want to say that if you have questions, if you uh, want to know something about a particular section on Minilog XD, if you're curious about any of the Korg analog synths, Volkas, anything that Korg has to offer, just let us know in the chat. And we're looking and we're, we're uh, paying attention. And if we can help you out, we sure can um, uh, answer any questions that you have uh, uh, right here in the chat. All right, so let's write that by pressing write and then write again. So just an FYI, if you're on any of the logs, you can press write to save what you're working on. And before it actually saves, you can choose the slot that you're saving to. This is useful if you don't want to overwrite what's already in that slot. You can simply move it to another slot and then you've saved a new sound, which is really useful because you want to keep the sound that you started with, but maybe you changed it into something that you really like it uh, and you want to keep that too. So let's exit out of there. Now, some other cool stuff that we can do here is kind of some bread and butter sounds. So I saw in the chat that somebody asked if we had any CS80 type sounds. And one of the first, actually the first preset on the Mini Log XD is, is sort of a, a CS80 style brass that is kind of reminiscent of a Blade Runner sound. So if I just pull that preset up and press play. So that's kind of a, a really, really thick and heavy sounding brass. And we can actually recreate that Let's go to a initialized program. So we have our gated saw wave again. Let's choose a slot over here. And the first thing that we want to do is bring up our release and our attack on our amp envelope. And this is going to be the loudness contour over time. So if we bring in some attack, that's going to raise the volume 
once we press the note to the maximum volume, and then the release is going to trail off once we release the note. So you can turn up that release there. Get a long release out of that out of that um, that envelope. So that's kind of the key to these really slow brooding brass sounds. Um, and the second thing that we want to do is bring in a second saw wave. So, so we have a second saw wave. We have two saw waves going in unison. And the way we kind of get that old school analog synthy feel to it is to just slightly modulate the pitch so they're just slightly out of tune with each other. And let's drop the octave and you can really hear these aren't quite out of tune with each other. They're, they're slightly out of tune, but they're not out of, so out of tune that you hear them as different notes. They're just enough out of tune that they're kind of like two violins in a string orchestra playing in unison. They're pleasantly playing off of each other in frequency so that kind of the detune gives them this uh, nice stringy feel. You can detune that even more. And one thing to notice here is that the more that they're detuned, the faster the beating frequency. So you can notice there's kind of a beating frequency as the oscillators come in and out of tune with each other. You can hear it almost as a rhythm. There you go. So now if we go into reverb and we turn on our big smooth reverb, turn up the depth, turn up the time, and then bring down our filter a little bit, bring up our envelope generator intensity on the filter, make sure that we're targeting the cutoff there, set our attack on the filter to the same as the attack on the amp, do that for the uh, decay as well. But it's still missing a little something, and to my ears, what that sounds like is a little bit of pitch LFO. Very, very slow pitch LFO. So let's target the pitch by putting the switch all the way up. Let's go into just normal mode. Let's go to triangle shape. Let's turn the rate almost all the way down, maybe up by 20%. We're gonna start with the intensity all the way down. Let's go into edit mode and go into program edit. And what we wanna find is the LFO menu in program edit. And yes, LFO target oscillator all, which is fine. LFO key sync, we wanna turn that off. And LFO voice sync, uh, we can keep that on. So what that means is, if we go back to LFO key sync, that means every time I play a note, if it's on, the LFO is going to restart. So it's gonna sync with the notes. But if I turn that off, it's just gonna be a free running LFO. So regardless of when I play a note, the LFO is just going to be running at all times. So let's exit out of there and let's slowly bring in some LFO pitch modulation. And let's bring up the, the rate. You can, you can really hear it, and then we can dial in the speed. So I actually think maybe this would sound better with some shimmer reverb. So let's go to the riser reverb setting. We can turn our time down so we don't get too intense with it. Maybe turn down our master volume too.
Once again, I want to say a, a hello to anybody in the chat that has some questions. So uh, one of the questions that I see is from Alexander. Are you planning to release some user oscillators for XD? So right now, we don't have any official plans to release any user oscillators. However, we are uh, very pleased to see that some of the users in the community have actually been posting their own oscillators, not only um, that they've created, but even utilities that allow you, for example, to take a little WAV file on your computer without knowing any code and then be able to... Um, uh, uh, convert that into a file that can then be loaded on the multi-engine on here, which is awesome. Uh, so then you can create your own oscillator without knowing any of the code that you need to uh, code your own oscillator. So thanks, shouts out to the users out there that are creating their own oscillators. It's the same with effects. We have tons of users out there creating custom effects for the XD and the Prologue and now the NTS-1 multi-engine also. Um, so, uh, any other questions, let us know in the chat and we'll try to get to that. And if we have any requests on sounds that we want to try and create, let us know. And, uh, and we'll just kind of continue with the sound design. Really cool. What a great sound. So yeah, that's just a simple two oscillator, two VCO saw wave unison sound with some uh, pitch detune on oscillator two. And then that's running into the filter, which has a little bit of envelope on it. I've got attack and release on both envelopes. Then the LFO is doing some very slow, non-key synced pitch modulation in a triangle wave in normal speed mode. And I have the filter down about this much. And then in the effect section over here, all I have is that. Riser reverb right there, that riser shimmer reverb time just about up the middle, the depth just about up the middle too. All right, so let's actually write that because I might want to use that for creating a beat or something later. And let's go into let's go into arpeggiation. Here's something that I love to do on the Mini Log XD using the sequencer on here and the arpeggiator. So we use the arpeggiator on our first example that we kind of created with that lo-fi um, kind of jazzy chord progression. And one thing that we can do with the arpeggiator always on is to create sort of a kind of baroque like Bach style chord progression uh, by First, doing the same thing that we did before by going to Sequence Edit and turning the step resolution down to a half note and turning the default gate time up to 100%. Then we can exit out of that. And then we can just record our chord progression. Now we've recorded that, and if we play it, add a little reverb. That's 
That sounds cool already, even just with a little bit of reverb, but we want to throw that into arpeggiator mode. And before we even start playing, I know already that I'm going to want to go fall. So the notes are going to go down in the chords that I put in and two, fall two, which is two octaves. And I want to drop the octave of that first VCO. See how that sounds. That sounds pretty great already, but we want to also add in some amp envelope and filter envelope. So let's turn our attacks down so we get a plucky sound. Put our filter down. Add in some drive. And the envelopes on Mini Logger XD are really nice and snappy. So you can get that nice snappy plucky sound out of there. And if we throw on some tempo synced delay, let's go with ping pong BPM. Let's turn the time down. Bring in a second oscillator. the multi-engine. Remember that trick that I showed you earlier where if we hold shift and modulate the shape knob on the multi-engine. So that's a little bit of chord regression creating on Minilog XD and then using the arpeggiation to turn that into a super epic sequence. Uh, now I've got a request from the chat, which is to create some epic leads. So let's go to a blank program and I'm gonna show you guys how to get a every single oscillator on this synth going in unison and detune them all against each other for one of the most epically massive leads you can imagine. So let's start with our gated saw wave. Turn down the octave. Now bring in our second saw wave oscillator. We have unison going on. Now let's go into VPM on the multi engine and bring that up and move that over to the saw wave. So I'm going to turn down our first two oscillators. You can hear that we saw wave on the multi engine. And we can bring in our second saw wave. Let, we're going to keep the tuning of this saw wave in the middle and detune the other saw waves against that. So we have 15 cents detune uh, underneath. And then the third oscillator will be 15 cents over the top. Maybe bring that in a little narrower, maybe a little less. Nine cents. And this one will be... Minus nine. Cool. So that's three unison saw waves and so we just kind of have a thick gated saw wave and we can play chords with that. But the request was for some epic leads. So let's go into unison mode. Now we have every single voice, all four voices going at once. Suddenly got a lot louder, right? Because we're all in unison. 
I'm going to adjust my volume so we're not clipping here. And the voice mode depth knob, which is really useful here, voice modes are another feature that came back from the first mini log. It's also on the prolog. Uh, you have poly, unison, chord, and arpeggiator. We've used poly and arpeggiator so far, but we can now go into unison mode and detune all four voices against each other. So not only do we have all three oscillators per voice going, so that is 12 saw wave oscillators in unison detuned against each other, we're also going to detune those voices against each other in unison. <laughs> Cool. And let's give it a little bit of release. And let's give it a little bit of portamento as well. And the next thing that we want to do is bring our filter cutoff down. Bring our drive up. Sounds almost like a re-space right there. So let's bring in the smooth. Actually, let's try the space reverb. Space. Oh, I scrolled past it. And there we go. We can give it less detune, give it more detune. And if we give it some resonance and take the drive off, and give it some envelope generator intensity. There it is, creating an epic saw wave unison lead with every single oscillator playing in unison, just detuned against each other. If you're just joining us on stream, welcome to our first ever live streamed clinic right here on the Korg Facebook. Um, we're showing off the Minilog XD today, showing some tips and tricks. And if you have any questions on the Minilog XD, on the Korg log series in general, don't be afraid to let us know in the chat if you have requests about different sounds that you want to see how to make, uh, you can check those out too and let us know if you want to see those. So let's go into some presets that I really like. I, I got the chance to do some of the presets on this and let's see. Oh, this one's nice. This one's a really relaxed preset. <laughs> This one here that uses the motion mode to great effect.
So that's another one that I created, and to check out what's going on there, we can go into motion mode, and I'm really only using two modes, two lanes of motion sequencing. So that's, of course, the speed of the LFO, and that's being stepped motion sequenced, and then there's smooth motion sequencing on the cutoff. So I wanna go over very quickly the difference between stepped motion sequencing and smooth motion sequencing. You guys can see on the screen here that at certain points in this sequence, and I'm gonna play it, on the snares here, you can see that the filter opens up and allows white noise through. And what's happening is there's a step of motion here where the filter opens up momentarily and then closes back down once that step passes. So the Mini Log XD introduces stepped motion sequencing. And the difference between that and smooth motion sequencing is, and if we uh, check out one of the comments here, ambient pad, por favor. All right, so let's start with an ambient pad and apply some smooth motion sequencing to it. So let's bring in some attack some release and let's actually use the user oscillator And let's go and put a sequence in and we're just going to program on the fly as our sequence plays and let's turn our gate time up to 100%. Let's go to step length and we only need eight steps in here and let's record our sequence. Now if I press play, bring in some reverb, and like I was saying before, we can do what's called a stepped, a smooth motion sequence. We did step to before, and a smooth motion sequence is as simple as going into motion mode while you're playing a sequence, pressing record, and moving a knob. So what I've done there is I had a sequence going and I pressed record while I was in motion mode and it actually recorded the movement of this knob. And I can do that up to four times. That's the motion sequencer on the Minilog XD. And motion sequencing is something you'll also find on a lot of Korg synths, such as some of the Korg Volkas, some of the, uh, the, the other logs, like the monolog and the Minilog. And in those sequences, sequencers, you have up to four lanes of motion sequencing on, on the log sequencers where... I can even look at what's in my sequencer. I have cutoff. And if I wanted to clear that, I could clear that and do it again. Or I can add another lane. So let's add another lane. Let's bring in some, os some oscillator one.
Look at that beautiful chord progression we've done with that really smooth, nice motion sequencing. Some happy little accidents in there. And that's the beautiful thing about programming these synths. It's that even if you don't quite get all the way to what you were planning on creating as far as a sound when you started, when you were thinking about creating a sound, you'll get somewhere. And maybe that will be something that's a little different than what you thought, but it'll be equally as usable or it'll give you a whole new idea to make some new music with that sound. So before we go, I want to open up the floor to the comments. If you folks have any other questions on Minilog XD or on any core gear, uh, we have a couple minutes left. Otherwise, I'm just going to keep playing around with this beautiful, uh, with this beautiful um, morphing wavetable oscillator. So I want to thank everybody for coming out and we'll see you in the next live stream. We've got a lot of cool stuff coming up, including maybe soon the Korg wave state. Thanks for tuning in. We will see you folks next time.